Hi, everyone. I'm not sure if you can hear my mic. Um, could you type into the chat if you can? <laughs> Just to make sure. Yes. Thank you, Thomas. Um, so last class, um, the majority of the people who talked in the chat said they would like to see um, ninth grade high school biology um, slides and what we're taught at school. So I found the animal system slides from back then and I'll be going over those today. It, um, yeah. So if you're not in high school yet, this is a good preparation for that because you'll know exactly what they're looking for. Um, all right, I will share my screen. Um, so this covers majority of the animal systems. Let me close this. Let's start. Homeostasis is important. It is like balance within our body. Um, every organ system plays a role in maintaining the constancy of their environment, right? So for example, the blood level of nutrients, blood pressure, heart activity, right? So all of everything that your body does is in order to maintain homeostasis. You want to be at a balance. You can't have too much oxygen, too much carbon dioxide, too many wastes, too little of anything, because then it sets everything off. You have to maintain the pH of your blood, the pH of your cells, and everything that ever happens is working so that we have this balance in our body. And um, for balance to happen, for homeostasis to occur, there's communication, communication across cells and communication um, across systems. Primarily, the main systems in our body that are involved with signaling and, um, sorry, I had to sneeze, um, didn't sneeze, <laughs> are the nervous system and the endocrine system. So. You probably know your nervous system has nerves and if your brain is like i want you to make a fist you'll make a fist and that is because your brain is communicating via nerves for your hand to make a fist the endocrine system um does this via blood hormones bloodborne hormones just all all hormones you need to worry about spread via blood and um so that is more processes that you can't really see so if your heart rate is too low, some hormones will be released in order to help increase that blood pressure. And um, there are two main feedback mechanisms that are seen in any form of communication within, within our body and like any anything in biology, you'll see positive and negative feedback. Um, negative feedback is what is more common, significantly more common in our body than positive feedback. It is like, imagine you want to eat a donut or you want to eat multiple, you're, you're hungry and you want donuts. And so you're like, and you're clicking a button and donuts are appearing. After a while, you'll have enough donuts to where you're not hungry anymore. So you'll stop clicking, right? That stopping is negative feedback. So the net effect of the response to the stimulus is to shut off the original stimulus. So say you're running, uh, this is another more biology related example. You're running, you're running a lot, it's hot outside, so your body temperature increases. Then you're gonna start sweating. So it starts, your body will cool down, you'll probably get signaled to drink water, take a rest, and then your body temperature will eventually go back to normal level. And then you'll no longer have this response or this signaling like, hey, your body is too hot. So that is negative feedback. Um, and again, like almost any system that happens in your body is negative feedback. There are two things that come to mind that are positive feedback, which are blood clotting and giving birth. Oh, vomiting, I guess as well. Um, it's definitely not talked about as much. So these are, I guess, the only three things you'll ever need to worry about where positive feedback occurs. And that is where the more you signal, the more occurs, and the more that occurs, the more signaling that happens. So in blood clotting, 
you will have a few platelets come and those plates, platelets will tell more platelets to come and the more platelets will tell even more platelets to come. And that is so you stop the like loss of blood because that is obviously not an ideal situation. Um, and that is positive feedback. So feedback that tends to cause a variable to change in the same direction. Yeah, so it enhances the stimulus. That's all you need to know. Um, right, this is a good example. Any form of feedback is something goes to something and that something tells it back something. So in positive feedback, you have A that is stimulating B and in response, B will stimulate for more of A and then A will stimulate more B and so on. And then in negative feedback, A stimulates B and when there's enough of B, it'll stop stimulating A. So no more A is produced. Um, and then we'll start with the nervous system. Nervous system, we talked a little bit about it just now. The nervous system, right. So it interacts with literally everything. I'm sure you were aware of that well before now. Um, right, your brain, your nerves, your spinal cord play a really, really important job in your body. Um, and there's also ways that the rest of the body works to help the nervous system. For example, your bones, your vertebrae, um, which you can probably, like if you touch your back, the center of your back, you'll feel like these prods poking at you. Those are your vertebrae or your spinal column. And that covers your spinal cord and protects it from being damaged. Um, so you might, you may know, maybe not, but if someone has like a very big accident or something happens to like their back area, they may experience paralysis or something of that sort because you may hit um, a very important nerve in your spine. And the goal of your um, vertebrae is to protect that. Um, right, your brain obviously controls these systems in your body. Hormones, every, everything is controlled by your brain. It's essentially what this slide is saying. Um, again, these slides are like taken from high school biology. So it is not very, the class itself is not like as in depth as many of you guys are accustomed to learning, which is why these slides are like very basic. Um, but it is good to know it. Again, if you don't know this much, this is good knowledge. Try to retain all of it. Um, I'll also post these slides. And even if you do know this, it's always good to come back to the basics so you always have a strong foundation. So excretory system. Your excretory system is your kidneys is really your kidneys, urethra, bladder. It's like the three parts of the excretory system. Um, one very important hormone in your body is ADH, the antidiuretic hormone. A good way to remember what this does is diuresis is a fancy word for peeing. Um, so antidiuretic means you don't want to pee. And what this hormone does is it absorbs more water um, in the kidneys so that you secrete or like excrete less. So you'll pee less water um, and your body will keep that water. So say again, like you're outside, you're running, you're dehydrated, um, your antidiuretic hormone will likely be released because you want to save as much water as possible because you're releasing a lot of it as sweat. So now your body is in a state in which water is not as much as it should be in the body. And this is one of the ways that your body will balance it. Um, yeah, so here you see, if you, if you don't drink a lot of water, your pee will be darker and smell stronger because there is less water in it to dilute it because you're trying to save that water. As opposed to drinking more water, your pee is lighter, smells less strong. I think there's a thing like, showing how healthy you are. Um, what actually what actually happened in your body? All right, so the hypothalamus um, is one of the, like it is the master gland, master hormonal gland. It is very important. It controls the release of a lot of hormones. Um, so say your hypothalamus is understanding that you are dehydrated. It'll send a signal to your pituitary gland, which will then increase the amount of antidiuretic hormone in your blood and then that'll go to the kidneys. Oh, this probably says it here. Um, 
well, let's look at this first. Kidneys, and then it absorbs more water and it continues like that. And then this is a great example of negative feedback because once you have enough water in your body, you'll no longer have your hypothalamus sending signals and the cycle will stop until you are in a state of dehydration again. Right, yeah, so it says negative feedback here. It starts here. So you have low amounts of water and blood and high amounts of urine produced. Then your, then your hypothalamus tells your pituitary that you don't have enough water. Um, then the pituitary will, will release ADH. Your kidneys absorb more water. In comparison, if you have too much water in the body, that is also not good because then your blood pressure will be really high and um, a lot of other problems. Like again, you wanna maintain this very like delicate state of homeostasis where everything is perfect. And this is one of the ways that your body is working towards maintaining normalcy. So high amounts of water in the blood and low amounts of urine are made. Then your pituitary, tell us pituitary, that amount of water and blood is high. And then your pituitary will stop releasing ADH. So your kidneys release, reabsorb less water. Um, then different ways. So, okay. Uh, the term excretion means like to get rid of probably something of that sorts. So when I said the excretory system is just the kidneys, urethra, ureters, bladder, I'm, I'm not wrong. However, there are smaller parts that are considered to be part of the excretory system by some people. Um, if you look at a textbook, these likely will not be written there. However, um, different ways of excreting wastes, your lungs um, remove carbon dioxide from your blood. Um, and your integumentary system, your skin, whenever you sweat, you also release like some salts, some wastes, water, urea. Urea is um, toxic. You don't want too much of that in your body. And yeah, okay. Endocrine system. We spoke a little bit about it via the hypothalamus. Um, Hormones affect neural processing, hormones affect sexual development, hormones affect the growth of bone and muscles, they affect, oh, the immune system, I read that it's in tachymetry, and um, the rate of metabolism. So like basically everything important in your body is regulated by a hormone. Oh, is that all? Okay. Um, that was kind of sad. As you can see, like <laughs> high school biology or like pre-AP biology is not of great depth. And if you have not taken the class yet, you will thrive. Um, yeah, so I guess you won't need to know it for this class. However, um, it is weird just saying this much, this little. We'll come back to it. I should have more slides relating to this after the end of these slides. Reproductive system. So this is an example of positive feedback um, with childbirth. So there's contraction of the uterus, uterine contractions. Yes. So there is a hormone, actually, there we go, uh, called oxytocin. It is help. It helps with childbirth and it basically stimulates uterine contraction and then the baby is pushed, and then more oxytocin, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Okay, these are very important systems. Circulatory, we went over that in great depth last class, and then respiratory and digestive. Blood clotting, like I said earlier, is an example of positive feedback. So whenever you have a, say you like fall off your bike and you have a scrape, <laughs> um, when this happens, a chemical is released. Chemical? Okay, so it, it, if exterior like skin is cut from the outside, uh, something called tissue factor is released. And this calls for platelets to come um, because platelets are involved in clotting. And when the platelets are activated, they release more signals. So there is a thing called the clotting cascade and it requires a lot of clotting factors. Um, I would go in depth, but it's just like clotting factor one and clotting factor three. Um, and just like all of these come together to finally create thrombin and fibrin, 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 
um, to create the blood clots that you see. So whenever, like next time you pick at your scab, remember that your body has worked very hard to create this. Um, you should be more gentle. <laughs> so once these platelets are activated, they were, yeah. So you can try these out. Does anyone want to answer the big ideas questions? Where does the circulatory system take the molecules from your food and oxygen from your lungs? Anyone want to take a guess at any of these? What process do your cells use oxygen and glucose for? What do we get from this process? These are not tough. Yeah, <laughs> um, energy is definitely correct. Glucose is used to create ATP. ATP is energy. Nice. 10 points to you. <laughs> awesome. Okay, we'll move on if no one else wants to answer. That is okay. Nutrient absorption. So you eat to get nutrients. Nutrients are used in the body. They are obtained via the digestive system. Um, boo, the slides are lame. Okay, let me talk a little bit about this. The digestive system, let's like go step by step. So you start with your mouth, right? You have salivary amylase, which is like your saliva contains this enzyme that starts with the digestion of carbohydrates. Um, not like full digestion to like monomers. However, it does break down larger ones. Then your esophagus, nothing happens in your, you know, maybe, maybe like the food mixes together, but no like actual digestion. Then where does it go? So that's the stomach. Stomach does a huge, has a huge role in, um, protein breakdown. There is a hormone, hormone, um, enzyme released called pepsin, which is involved in, breaking down proteins. There's a lot of them um, in the stomach. And then you go to the small intestine. Small intestine is where ma majority of the absorption occurs. Um, and here, the rest of the digestion will occur. And the pancreas will secrete a lot of um, enzymes as well into the small intestine to allow for the full digestion of everything. Um, Right, so any, for the most part, any nutrient that you take, it is absorbed from your small intestine. Um, that's why we have things called villi, where they look similar to cilia on a cell, and they help absorb as much as possible. And then whatever is not absorbed goes to the large intestine. Large intestine does water absorption. And then whatever is left is poop. Um, right, so... Nervous system controls the involuntary, right? So digest di digestion is an involuntary process, right? We don't control it. We couldn't control it if we wanted to. Respiration is both involuntary and voluntary because if you're like thinking a lot about your breathing, you could maintain it at however you want. But when you're not thinking about breathing, that doesn't mean you stop breathing. Um, oh, if you don't know, involuntary means like it is not in your control. So your heart rate, your heart beating is an involuntary action. Um, however, like scratching your head, that is voluntary. So one of the most prominent voluntary functions of your body is, um, or like voluntary organs in your body are muscles, your skeletal muscles, um, because you can control everything your skeletal muscles um, but not uh, only skeletal muscles because cardiac muscles are in the heart and that is pumping of blood, which we just talked about was involuntary. And there's also smooth muscle, which is in the digestive system, which is also involuntary. Um, right. The diaphragm is this muscle. So I'm sure you can imagine like your own body. You have your like lungs sitting in your chest and right below your lungs is a muscle called the diaphragm is written here. The diaphragm like separates your lungs from your digestive organs and everything like in your abdominal area. 
So when you're taking a deep breath, so you're like, right, your lungs are expanding. And the way they do that is the diaphragm pushes down on the organs below. It pushes down to make more room so your lungs can expand. And then when your lungs relax, it'll push, it pushes back up. So now you're like, the rest of your organs can have a little room and the cycle continues. So the diaphragm is really important. You can't breathe without the diaphragm because your lungs need to expand. Um, so if you know of the disease tetanus, tetanus results in muscle um, paralysis everywhere, all the muscles in your body. So number one, like your heart is going to stop beating. Your heart is made of cardiac muscles. And number two, you can't breathe because your diaphragm is no longer working. And of course, like all muscles are important, but those are like two very, very important muscles. All right, immune and lymphatics. Um, this also, all systems interact with other systems. You could name any two obscure systems, um, body systems and tie them together very greatly because everything works with everything. Um, the first line of defense in your, in your immune system is your skin, which is part of the integumentary system. This is a physical defense. It is like if there was bacteria around me, which there definitely is, I have skin around me to protect myself. Then your circulatory system is involved with transporting your um, leukocytes or your white blood cells. And it works with the lymphatic system, which we also talked about last class. And then the excretory system This is not like, when you think of immune, do not necessarily jump to, oh, your kidneys. Um, but it, it does, for to some extent, um, excrete pathogens. And then um, your blood cells are created in bone marrow. So your white blood cells, red blood cells, blood cells are made in your bone marrow, which is why it is um, important for the immune system because then you'll have your white blood cells. You can also, you may have heard of a bone marrow transplant um, that is with people because like bone marrow is so important because you need cells. So certain times if it is not working properly or um, just like blood type issues, you may have new bone marrow implanted so you're, you can create new cells in your body um, that function. Integumentary system, think of skin when you see that. It's a long word. Um, right. A very, very big function of this system, the integumentary system, is regulating temperature. Um, you don't want to heat up. <laughs> that is very, very bad for you. And a great way to get rid of this heat is releasing it through your skin, through sweat. So whenever you sweat, your body has this salt sweat. You've probably, you may have tasted it before. It is salty. Um, that is because it has salts. It also has urea, which is salty, um, on your skin. Water absorbs heat before it evaporates. And then when the water evaporates, it takes the heat with it. So now that leaves like a cooling effect on your body. Oh, this is nice. This is a sweat gland. This looks like a sudoriferous gland, maybe. So within your cell, you can see this, like that type of layer. That is your epidermis. Your epidermis is the outermost section of your skin. Um, for the most part, it is comprised of dead cells. For the most part, the bottom two layers, there are five layers, four or five layers, depending on where in the body you are of your epidermis. And the bottom two, really just the bottom one has living cells. The rest of them are dead, um, which is like good when you think about it. So whenever you scratch yourself, every time you like touch, or I guess like me doing this, results in cells falling off my hand. Neither of us can see that, but that's what's happening. And you don't want to like scratch off cells that are living. And um, this like, um, oops, this section here is likely your papillary dermis and the rest is your reticular dermis. They're just the dermis. Um, and that is where your sweat glands are. A lot of your receptors. So the receptors for detecting deep touch and vibrations are located here. There are also a good amount of receptors like 
in this area. Um, and that's how you know when something is touching you. Right, your hair also does a great job at like insulation. So retaining heat, the opposite of overheating. Um, skin as well. But you may notice like on a hot day, your hair is kind of hot. Maybe it's, I have black hair, so it does more absorption than like I would say blonde hair does. Um, but that is my hair retaining heat. Mucus, mucus, like in your stomach. Are you talking about like GI, the immune system? Oh, right. So, well, part of the first line of defense is like the internal linings of your body as well. So um, I ate a sandwich today, right? And there was likely bacteria on that sandwich. So um, maybe a good amount of that bacteria was defeated because you have mucus lining all the way down your esophagus, your throat, your stomach, and typically has blood cells, white blood cells, or um, some type of environment that is used to kill these bacteria. Pathogens. Um, right, and that's also considered to be part of the first line of defense. Then there's the circulatory system, excretory system, nervous system, right. And I talked about the receptors in your skin. Yeah. Muscular system. Um, so the muscular system, I talked a little bit earlier, you have three types of muscles in your body, you have smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle <coughs> is the only voluntary muscle. Um, cardiac muscle is only found in the heart. Smooth muscle, for the most part, is like your um, digestive system, your blood cells, maybe a few other places as well. Negative feedback with blood pressure. I think I gave this example earlier, maybe not. So when your heart is pumping, you have things called baroreceptors. Baro is like a barometer measures air pressure, I'm pretty sure. So baroreceptors measure blood pressure. They're in your aorta, which is like the first artery to leave the heart. And these receptors send messages to the brain. Like, are we doing okay? Do we need to pump harder, less hard? Do we have too much blood? Um, so when the pressure is too high, baroreceptors message the brain and heart rate increases or decreases accordingly. So if it's too low, you wanna pump faster because you wanna get out more blood. Um, if it is too high, you wanna slow down, come down a little bit. Um, right, so smooth muscle is found in your stomach, your intestinal tract, and it moves digested food throughout the body. What? Um, no, your blood vessels move digested food throughout the body. I guess it just means it helps digest food. Okay. Um, so you can see how credible like high school is. <laughs> um, yeah, they don't go too, too in depth. So you guys will do fine here. Circulatory, respiratory system. Oh, right. So one of the things that is pr produced as a waste when your muscles contract is called lactic acid. You may have heard of it. Um, a lot of, a common misconception actually, a very, very widespread misconception I was under this impression as well until I read textbooks. But um, like whenever you have cramps from running or like your leg is cramping, it's because you have too much lactic acid built up. Um, that is not the case. It is not like, okay, there is correlation, but not causation. If you ever take AP stats, yes, um, it's a great class, but we, we talk about that a lot. So when there is high lactic acid, that likely means you are going to be in a physically like poor condition because you've contracted your muscles a lot. 
However, it is not the lactic acid that causes this to happen. It's the differences in pH. Um, yes, but lactic acid is produced um, when it, whenever your skeletal, skeletal muscles contract and it is sent um, to get broken down because too much is not good for you. Yes, and then, right. Skeletal system is much more important than like you would think it is because you just think, oh, bones, your structure, but it also creates blood cells, um, protects a lot of organs, and that is important. So, right, it produces new blood cells, stores minerals. Um, it does a really important job in regulating calcium in the body. And that is important because calcium is used in muscle contraction. So if you have like an overabundance of calcium that may cause like your heart and skeletal muscles to contract weirdly or too strong, um, you don't want that. <laughs> uh, so your bones will store this. Yeah, and that is, that is all for these slides. I can pull up the next ones. Does anyone have any questions so far regarding the systems or anything else? Um, okay, I'm going to, you guys have a choice between nutrient, actually, no, this is more applicable, so it looks like this. One second. Okay, this is more like taking a step back. taking a step back and looking at just like animals um, and like the the thing about these like types of things like what is an animal you would think it's like so easy and so common sense like why even learn it but this was probably one of like the few things I had to study during class because oh, maybe they're not in the slides but like knowing the evolutionary trends. I don't know if we were ever tested on it, but um, it wasn't common knowledge to me beforehand. Or like the 10 things that make a cell a cell, things like that. It's like weird things that you have to memorize, but they have no great application. It's good to know it now. You don't have to worry about learning it later. So what is an animal? An animal is a eukaryote. Um, it is multicellular. They're heterotrophs, which means we eat other things to obtain energy. Plants are autotrophs, which means they make their own energy. Animal cells don't have cell walls. Cell walls are seen in some bacteria. They're seen in plant cells. We do not have them. Um, right, so across time, from way back ago until now, they're like way back ago, <laughs> Um, our bodies experience cell speciali specialization and levels of organization. So we have like special cardiac muscle cells and their skin cells and things like that. And then there's also like levels of organization refers to cell, organ, organ system, body. Should be all. Um, I guess it was not there before. Oh yeah, and all animals, like not even just humans. And then body symmetry and segmentation, um, you may know like pre, pre, less advanced animals are like smaller. They have less body systems than humans might have. Um, I know worms have like three or four body systems total. Um, and then body symmetry is also important. We have bilateral, bilateral symmetry. So there's like down, down your face. Um, there's also like circular symmetry. I'm not sure if that's the right term, but that's seen in like um, sea urchins, starfish, things like that. Uh, segmentation is seen more in like insects. So, well, I think I scrolled and saw a little bit about that. And then, yeah, so. oh, levels of organization. Adam, okay, cell organ, oh, cell tissue. Tissue is an important one. Cell, tissue, organ, organ system, organism. Mind blown. 
So body segmentation allows the development for specialized limbs. So here we see, I have no idea what this is, but for the most part, insects follow the head, thorax, abdomen rule, um, or they have a head, thorax, and abdomen. <laughs> um, yeah. Cephalization is important, school and like outside of school as well. It is like the brain moved more up and towards the front of the body as evolution occurred. So um, we have a brain in our heads. Yeah, so concentration of nervous tissues in one location. What was it? I think like a sea sponge doesn't have a brain. I believe it was a sea sponge. So they just have like, I don't know, floating nerves or something like that. Um, and across time, we became more advanced, advanced. And we have brains, concentrated nervous tissue towards the front top region of our body. Right, this is a good breakdown. Um, regulating things, we talk, excretory. I guess so. Um, I think they meant to say endocrine here. <laughs> um, yeah. Good thing you were here during class and not just looking at slides. Endocrine and nervous systems regulate digestion, um, respiration, circulatory is for nutrient absorption. You can eat this back. All right, regulation. Your nervous system maintains homeostasis by controlling and regulating all other parts of the body. The functions, three main functions, sensory. So um, I talked about receptors in the skin that are used to detect your environment. For They are either free nerve endings or they are connected to nerves. So your sensation of like pain or um, hot and cold is with a free nerve ending. Um, the other like Merkel cells are connected to nerves that tell you what's going on. Interpretation. Oh, this is like the whole signal. So you sense someone is touching your arm, your body's like, hey, someone's touching your arm. <laughs> and then your response is, did you need something? Um, and then the nervous system. Right, so here you can see cephalization where there is like, not really a brain. Oh yeah, nerve cells. Oh, there's a nerve net. Um, then it's like slightly going forward. Then you have a brain and nervous cord. And then you have this. That's kind of funny. <laughs> okay. Um, right. So simplest are nerve nets, jellyfish, sponges, hydra. Hydra, interesting. Um, ganglia, which is like, okay. So you have nerves, then you have ganglia, then you have your brain. Ganglia is just a bunch of nerves. Um, Right, cephalization, which you talked about, and then brain and spinal cord. What uh, increases from fish to mammals? Um, neurons. Okay, so parts of a neuron are their cell body, which is like this guy over here, circular person. Um, not person. <laughs> Uh, it contains the nucleus and organelles. Yeah, dendrites are up here. They get information from the nerve before it or wherever it is sensing. And this is your axon, which sends the signal to the next neuron or to the next dendrite, which is part of the next neuron. And um, what is cool is if you search up like types of neurons, there will be like interneurons, sensory neurons, and motor neurons. And you can see like some types of, some of these types of cells have more dendrites. Others have like more branched axons depending on their function. So a nerve impulse is an electrical signal um, that begins via a chemical message. So we say that one axon goes to one dendrite, but how? How does this happen? This happens via neurotransmitters, which are just chemicals that are released to the next receptors. So um, a common neurotransmitter that is seen before muscle contraction is called acetylcholine um, or like ACH is a nice abbreviation for it. And 
So it goes like axon, acetylcholine goes to the muscle and it signals the muscle to contract. Um, and there are other neurotransmitters in the body. They all help bring the, the message from one axon to the next dendrite. CNS. The CNS is your brain and spinal cord, central nervous system. So obviously you guys know what the brain does. Um, these are the parts of the brain. The cerebrum is like the main chunk of the brain. There are also four different divisions. This is, we talked about our hypothalamus earlier, which is like the master gland of the endocrine system. And it is so small. It's like that small, tiny little thing here, which is like so cool how so much everything important in your body is regulated by this teeny tiny little thing that is released from this even smaller pituitary gland. Um, then your brain stem is here. It is in charge of like balance, heart rate, breathing, lots of things. Oh no, cerebellum is balance. Right. So this is your brain, other functions, other parts of it. And this is like your limbic system on the inside, which does emotions. And the peripheral, peripheral nervous system is everything else. Um, right, there's somatic and autonomic. Somatic means body. Um, you can just remember <laughs> your body is voluntary or autonomic. Autonomic automatically happens, which is why it's involuntary. Um, this diagram is kind of weird levels of organizations. In this case, our cells are neurons. They create tissues that are called nerves that those nerves group together to create organs such as the brain and spinal cord, which makes up your system of the nervous system, which becomes your organism. Okay, excretory system, right? So kidneys, ureters, bladder, urethra. Excretion. you don't need to worry about evolutionary trends in the excretory system. I'll say it anyways, but like, listen to me, understand what's happening. Don't worry too much about memorizing this part. Um, right, so animals that are very, very primitive that live in the water, they don't have any form of like excretion. It's just like the cells of the body like release directly into the water so it is just like the cells that are like, oh, I have a lot of waste. And then it releases it directly, um, which is cool. Then there are worms and mollusks, which use nephridia, which are like tiny little. So like every, this grouping has nephridia, which release wastes. Um, similar, I guess, to a nephron, obviously not the same. Then insects have malphagian tubes. And then we have um, nephrons in our kidneys. Don't worry too much about this. All right, these, this is important. If there's anything you should know about the kidneys, it is these three steps, filtration, reabsorption, and secretion. So, um, oh, that is cool. Look at that. Fascinating, look how small your kidneys are. Your kidneys are so important. A lot of like, I guess a lot of important things in your body are small. Very cool. Um, that is not, okay, a human. Anyways, uh, <laughs> um, there is no image of a direct like kidney. So, or the nephrons in a kidney, but basically you have a nephron and I'm not sure if you know what a nephron looks like. So I'll draw, oh God, okay. So you have an artery that is approaching, then basically what happens is it becomes a capillary and it like squiggles up a lot and then it leaves as a vein. However, oh, let me make this red. So, you know, this is blood. This is like red, red, red. And these are capillaries here. And the reason it clusters up so much is because you want to have as much surface area as possible so that you can absorb as much as possible. So then whatever, what is filtered is not blood cells and not proteins, but like any other small nutrients and gases and wastes will come here. 
So I'll enter the nephron. The nephron becomes the proximal PCT, proximal convoluted tubule. So pretend that it's like super squiggly. And then it becomes uh, this loop called the loop of Henle. And then it becomes the distal convoluted tubule. And then it's a collecting duct. So basically in this process, the filtration occurs here. You have your blood. Uh, so filtration is happening here. You have your blood um, filtering, right? Then what happens in the proximal convoluted tubule is you will like, you're, it's just a filter. Like you can imagine a sieve. So the big things don't come out, but the small things do. However, some of the small things are important, right? So you'll reabsorb whatever you want, whatever is needed. So you'll absorb, reabsorb water, some nutrients you accidentally excreted, et cetera. Um, it'll come back. So that's reabsorption. And then there's also certain um, wastes that you just do not want. They're horrible for you. And that'll be secreted directly into the distal convoluted tubule. Um, so it goes straight here and then out into your urine. So that is the three main sections of the excretory system. Um, nephrons are cool. <laughs> you have like a million nephrons in each kidney and your kidneys are like that big. Cool stuff. So kidneys, yes, ureters are like the tubes that come from your kidneys. And this is your bladder and that's your urethra. This is your pelvic bone. Yeah. Um, Right, renal means kidney. So you see renal artery, you know, it is like associated with your kidney. And like, as you continue to like learn more about biology, you'll see these like terms apply to certain things more, um, which makes general learning easier. All right, nephrons, nice. Okay, then your ureter carries urine from the kidneys to the bladder, which is in the green. I don't know if this makes you uncomfortable, that photo, so I'll scroll past it. Um, then this is your bladder. There's a lot of like, oh, so this is made of smooth muscle. However, there is like this one, um, like flap here. Um, flap is not the right word, but it is controlled by skeletal muscle, which is why like you can control your bladder. You don't like, you know, when you can go to the bathroom. All right. Then your urethra is a small tube that carries bladder to the outside of your body. And then let me erase this. All right. And then we have your levels of organization. You have cells, tissues, organ systems, right? Kidney cells, bladder cells, which become nephrons. I guess those are, okay. Then kidneys, bladder, ureter, and urethra are your organs, which all make up your excretory system. And that sums up these slides as well. So going to stop sharing. And that is all I had for today. That is the sum of animal systems for ninth grade biology, high school biology, before AP bio, so it prepares you. Um, does anyone have any questions for any of this? Anything about high school? Um, I am here for you. And I also have a survey that I need to send to you. Here you guys go. Yeah, today's the last day of, or like not today, I think on Sunday, next Sunday maybe, or like the coming Sunday will be the last set of classes. Today's the last Friday class. And I'm going to be a junior. This link should work. You guys can tell everyone how much you love me <laughs> or how much you don't. Um, 
My favorite subject is biology. <laughs> um, thank you. I will need that luck. That's why I'm teaching this class. Um, yeah, I think bio is great. I love the applications of it. Um, hope you guys like it. I, I sent the link in the chat. It is, did you not get it? Like scroll up a little bit. <laughs> I can send it again. Okay, yeah, you should get the link. I appreciate any feedback. Oh, you can't. Can anyone see the link? Oh, I've been sending it to all panelists. Let me send it to all panelists and attendees. There we go. All right, now you should see it. Nice. Okay. That is all I have for today. If you don't have any questions, you guys can go eat some food, take a nap, whatever you plan on doing. Of course, thank you guys for coming. Bye-bye. No problem. Go. Go. All right. Do the rest of you guys have any questions? Maybe you left the Zoom playing. <laughs> Okay, well, if you don't have any questions, give me like two minutes. I'm gonna end the Zoom. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. All right, guys, I'm going to end the Zoom now. Bye bye. Thank you for coming. I may run into you in the future. <laughs> bye.